welcome to another episode of my top five. So in this episode we're going to be looking at my top five body and mind practices. And uh, yeah, quick executive summary at the start. So the five things I'm going to be talking about and the sort of sixth hidden thing. So the five things are walking, calisthenics, Eight pieces of the brocade, yoga nidra, weights, in this case dumbbells, and the sixth sort of thing that permeates everything for me, meditation. So I'm just going to slot that in um, as an overarching principle there. But these are the five, walking, calisthenics, eight pieces of the brocade, yoga nidra, and weight work or dumbbells in my case. And just talk a little bit about the different approaches I have to these five things and, and so these are things that I do in the course of the week sometimes some of them every day um, in the case of one thing it's it's once a week um, so let's go through and just I'll, I'll do my usual thing of sort of interweaving a few relevant life stories and maybe how I got into it so yeah, I put walking at the top of the list because I've always walked. Um, I grew out in a small. I grew up, grew out, grew up in a small village in Sussex, um, which did have you know a reasonable bus service um, to the local towns and villages. But a lot of the times, I found myself walking everywhere, and being on the edge of Ashdown Forest where I lived, which I've covered in a previous episode. Um, there was lots of opportunities to get out and about. So I've always walked, just part of, you know, day-to-day existence. And so growing up, it was just there, you know, I was out in the evening all the time, uh, weekends, that sort of stuff. And sort of as I got older, I found that that amount of time I spent walking sort of got less and less. And then, um, I suppose when I was about, so I think how old I would have been, so probably about 1920 maybe, somewhere around there, I think I remember when I was 19, um, I contracted what we call in the UK glandular fever, I think it's called mono in North America, um, and uh, yeah, it hit me for six it really knocked me out and as sort of part of my recovery um i started walking and i was slowly building it up like started off because i i was just completely mentally and physically drained and it took about a month or so for them to actually diagnose what it was anyway um what i you know, did there were several things that I did, and one of those was walking. And I, I literally started off just doing ten minutes every evening, and then over the course of several months, I built it up to going out on the forest for an hour and a half every day. And for me, at that point, that was like my sweet spot. But basically, was was an hour and a half was was perfect. It was basically how it came. To an hour and a half, um, hour and a half was it took me forty five minutes to walk from my house to what I considered to be the sort of top of the forest. So there's a place in Ashdown Forest called the Ashdown Forest Centre, and uh, to walk from my house across the golf courses, golf courses because there's two around there, and then out to the top road thing we used to call it. I can't remember the actual name of the road, but the Ashdown Forest Centre's on that. It used to take me forty five minutes to get up there. And then 45 minutes to get back, and that's an hour and a half. And then weekends, I'd go out for a bit longer. But, um, yeah, I found that was, at the time, perfect. And it helped in a lot of ways. Uh, improved my physical condition, but also mentally. I find walking, after I've been about out for about, I would say, at least half an hour, 45 minutes, um my mind completely clears and mentally I get very, what's the word, 
um, not productive, but but I almost reach this sort of mental clarity and start having cool ideas about things, either ideas for projects or those sort of things. I also this is like going to this like um, what do they call that? I'm, I'm in the I'm in the groove. Um, yeah, just something about it. And so, yeah, that's so on and off. I sort of carried on that, and some so over time, like you know, I dulled it back a bit. But what I found personally over experimenting is that everybody, I think, has to find their sort of walking sweet spot. And that that can be anything. You know, there's all these various guides, and if you read through the article um, under in here, it's under health benefits. Um, you'll find that you know there's a whole step thing, and that that's been you know there's various research been on done on that, and they've raised and lowered the number of steps because I believe the original figure was it ten thousand was just a figure that was plucked out almost of thin air, but it seems to be that it's actually getting quite close to being. 10,000 steps, which funnily enough, for me, 10,000 steps is, surprise, surprise, an hour and a half of walking. Now, obviously, you can spread this out during the day, and that's what I, I want to sort of talk about um, when I'm t- still talking about walking. Is So what I've tended to do over the years is, is flip-flop between different things. Um, I find that, um, and this is going to be different for everybody, so... Um, there's been periods in my my life where I've been I've had a really active job job been walking around a lot, like you know, doing internal IT support, um, like old school style, um, without necessarily remote access. Um, I used to find myself walking around a lot, um, and also tying that with sort of ad hoc training, one to one training where you physically need to be at a desk or it, it, there's a physical side of IT where, you know, you have to take the machine apart, those sort of things. And I I found there was a period in my life where actually I was easily doing 10,000 steps in a day through doing that and just walking around at lunchtime, just walking around wherever I was working. So um, sometimes, you know, it's actually just through integrating into to our daily existence we may not have to set aside a time specifically for walking so that's one one end of the spectrum where you don't really say i'm going to go out for 20 minutes it's just you know your existence um the day-to-day nature of what you do you actually manage to do a lot of walking and i've had jobs like that before i you know passed my car test where i used to have to walk quite a way to catch the bus to get to work um you know, so I'd be walking a lot. So that there's that situation. Um, or you might want to break it down. Like another thing I've done is like, you know, do say three, four, three 30 minute walks in a day or three 20 minute walks. Because now what I tend to do, I've settled more on about an hour a day because I do other things as well. And that's the other thing. You know, what other exercises might you do during the day? So, yeah, so you know, three half an hours or two half an hours or as I currently do, a single hour um, with like an hour and a half, maybe certain days on the weekend. And again, it just depends on how much time you have to spare. But just experiment with it. Work out where your sweet spot is. Like As I've said, for me, I like the idea of going out for walking for a fairly long stretch that's over about 30 to 40 minutes because then I get into the zone. That's the word I was looking for. I just get into the zone. And when you're in the zone, it, it's a wonderful feeling. You just feel super resourceful. That's the other word I was looking for. You feel super resourceful. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, if you don't do much walking you want to do, just take it easy. Obviously, there are situations with, with and I would say this with any, when you're engaging in any exercise program, obviously, it's good to take the appropriate medical advice in case you have any, you know, uh, conditions, either medical conditions you're aware of or stuff you're not aware of as well so you know get a get a get a checkup but yeah then what you can then do is just experiment and just see what your body prefers 
you know, whether it's um, multiple walking sessions a day, whether you want to integrate it into what you do, maybe walk. Um, like sometimes what I used to do is catch a bus um, and get off at a different stop and then walk back. Yeah, it's a very popular thing to do. So, you know, the usual thing people say, like, you know, take the stairs instead of um, taking the lift. Or um, what I tend to do is I plan my walks deliberately to maximise hills, those sort of things. But again, just just go with, you know, what your body's telling you and what you feel comfortable with. And you'll find a sweet spot where you just get in the zone and you're at your most resourceful. Because the idea of all of this is, for me, exploring body and mind practices is all about flourishing. Like, what is the most flourishing for you? And it's no good if you're, you know, you're walking and it's causing injuries. Um, so again, speed's important. Like, what speed do you feel comfortable walking at? You can also integrate meditation into walking as well. There's some interesting walk, walking meditations you can do, both fast and slow, where you can integrate walking alongside um, counting your breath as well. Obviously, you need to pay pay attention as well to the the surroundings around you, um, you know, just in case. So there's that as well. But yeah, just again, you know, working with with your body and and working with the sort of feedback you're getting as well. Another interesting things you can do, I have experimented with on and off is um, what I sometimes do is, is work out where 1K is on my walk, like the first 1K, and do the first 1K as fast as I can um, and just see what my maximum speed is. Just as, again, just experimenting. Other things you can do is using a metronome as well. That's really handy. I have something called 120 pace. So that's, you know, each step is a beat. So it's 120 beats per minute. And I've used walking tapes as well that incorporate that. You know, listening to music is really helpful as well. So again, anything that helps you get into a zone helps you sustain. So, I can never say this, calisthenics. Um, Yeah, so it's a form of strength training where you utilise an individual's body weight as resistance to form multi-joint compound movements with little or no equipment. Um, Yeah, this as well. um, Yeah, gymnastic exercises to achieve fitness and grace of movement. um, Or light gymnastic exercises, I've heard it called. And that's what my understanding of it was was back in the day it was just any gymnastic style exercise which helped with fitness helped with posture movement so you know you're using your body as resistance but in some positions the resistance might be less or more to the point where certain aspects of these exercises may be a form of stretching so there's an overlap, I always feel, between, you know, those ones which utilise, you know, the maximum amount of um, pressure or strength from weight as body's weight as resistance and those where it's fairly minimal. And I think probably, like a lot of people, the first time you become aware of this is through um PE, physical ed, whatever you want to call it in your particular country, um, at school. That's where I first became aware of it. Later on, and sadly I don't have the book anymore, I read this really interesting book around the same time that I had um, mono um, about something that's called Change Your Metabolism Diet. Um, Because I was just trying to work with my fitness generally and diet. And in the back of that book, in addition to suggestions about walking and swimming and running and various other programs, it had a section on, I think there was about eight calisthenic exercises. And so through that, I got back into it. And then recently, I've been doing the usual, you know, suspects, I would say. So... um, 
I've reintroduced it more formally, like four days a week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, break on Wednesday, then Thursday, Friday. And generally, I do sit-ups um, to, I'm um, sorry, not sit-ups, push-ups, now to failure, um, and that's total failure, um, as opposed to failure of form. Uh, I was doing it to failure of form, and I've just pushed it a little bit longer. Now with this, of course, just be careful. Don't push yourself too hard. Um, don't go out and do um, push yourself to failure straight away. Just build it up um, slowly. And again, same advice with with all of these. You know, get medical advice first before you embark on any form of um, you know physical practice, training practice, where you might be pushing yourself. But certainly, yeah, push-ups. Um, I don't do sit-ups uh, anymore, mainly because I ha have a reoccurring back problem from way back, from lifting um, too many heavy objects over the years, um, and also um, getting into bad habits in uh, chairs before they started offering you advice on how to set your work chairs up correctly. So I do crunches instead of sit-ups. Um, I also do those lateral ones as well, where, you know, you sort of bring, difficult to describe, but you bring one arm up and your back up and you touch it with the knee on, or close to touching with the knee on the opposite side and you raise your knee up. Are they, I think, are they called lateral crunches? I can't remember the exact term for them. Um, squats, yeah. Um, I tend to do squats, but without without weights, so just a, just a squat here um, and I tend to do those separate I tend to do those later in the day sometimes I split stuff up but in the mornings push-ups crunches don't do any of these um, now I do do leg raises yeah definitely that's another one and uh, the good old planks uh, I do a, a two lots for just a minute I do uh, a full, I think it's called a full plank, where you just completely, you know, in the, the top position of a push-up, basically. And then I do a, I do that at the end of my session, and then I do um, planks from my elbows at the start of it, just as sort of almost like a warm-up before I do my, my push-ups. I think that's about it, actually. Yeah, so it's push-ups, um, crunches laterals leg raises and then two locks of planks uh, i did used to do sort of planks for two or three minutes from my elbows but i decided to split them up after i read somewhere that basically you don't get much reward after doing more than about a couple of minutes um so yeah and again i have to watch it a little bit because um you've got to remember to what do they do I'm trying to remember the name of the core, the problem. But if you don't engage properly when you're doing planks and you do have a back problem, yeah, you can, um, it causes a bit of a strain on your back. So, yeah, you've got to remember to sort of, as it suck your, your stomach in <laughs> a bit. So, yeah. So, you, you know, you're pulling weight through your stomach and not through your back. And again, with a lot of these, um, it's always a good idea, I think, to have, um, if you can, do it. Uh, I found, um, as then as a result, I had my back done, uh, sorted out. Um, I went and had some physio. And so I got a lot of sort of advice off the back of that um, about, yeah, those sort of things. So that was quite handy. So, yeah, yeah again, if you've got a bit of a you know, general underlying mechanic, biomechanical problems then um good idea to talk i think with a physiotherapist as well yeah so but yeah big fan of uh, of this and you know like i said sometimes i do parts of this at different times of day like um i quite like doing squats or doing things like as many squats as i can manage in a minute that sort of stuff i find that's quite useful i haven't progressed on to things like high intensity training um although i've dabbled with it um i did uh 
elliptical work for about a year, several years ago. Um, and I was doing some hit stuff on that for shorter, well, shorter periods of time. So this is one of my big favourites. This, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce this. Uh, I've, and I've always referred to it as, or known it as the eight pieces of the brocade. But I did come at it from Chikung. Um, so that's how I discovered it. Um, and I normally do this, well, I do actually do it every day. Um, towards the later in the day they're actually quite good as warming up exercises and as it says there's eight of them I'll include a link that I think better describes the uh, the procedure um, but yeah I find it re I've always found it really helpful um, it sort of doubles up a bit it, I find it raises my energy but also acts as a a good stretching exercise although I don't like I said I don't necessarily use it specifically at the start of day or prior to doing any exercises um, but I find it it helps as a sort of you know conditioning exercise that you might get through stretching um, you know where, where you're not using purely stretching exercises as just warm-ups You can get a lot from just the descriptions in here, but like I said, I'll include a link. Uh, and yeah, this came off the back of, um, I'm trying to think when I started to explore Chikung. I think funnily enough, it was um, it's a video I saw and I bought, which had the guy from the TV series Kung Fu, whose name I can't remember. Um, now and and he did some. That was it. It was a Tai Chi video, but in a, as a warm up to Tai Chi, um, he was doing uh, this. He's talking about Chikung and eight pieces of brocade as as warm ups for Tai Chi, and but I became more interested in this because it was easy to remember the the uh, the movements, the eight movements. And, you know, a lot of these have connections to internal alchemy, um, you know, connected with um, Taoism as well. So, you know, but, and yeah, now I think about it, that was how I discovered it is through my, through studying Taoism. Yeah, so that's where I got into it. But, yeah, I've, I've done it for, for you know, since then, um, yeah, pretty much all the time. There's another interesting uh, sort of allied discipline which I've discovered through getting videos about this, which is, I think they call it standing like a tree. So if you go down the, uh, the chicken rabbit hole, you find all these other disciplines as well, um, both in terms of things like, you know, martial art aspects soft martial arts and um yeah here we go standing meditate meditations so uh, in, yeah an internal alchemy so it's so all of these things yeah gymnastic breathing exercise of guiding and pulling i don't think i've ever tried that oh here we go yeah zanzirang standing like a post it's actually surprisingly hard to do for long periods of time. And there's about four exercises to do. But the book I had is quite amusing in, in that, you know, you it, it takes it, well, which it should do, it takes it, but it takes it very seriously. And it, it, you know, in the book it maintains, you know, you should practice, I think, what was it, first position, as it's called, or a certain number of positions for quite a long period of time like we're talking about months or a year before you move on to um, some of the more advanced standing stuff. Yeah, but it is quite difficult to uh, to maintain certain standing postures for extended periods of time. Uh, yeah. And uh, again, it comes back to, you know, I was saying like the sixth hidden practice behind all of this 
is meditation because you know you can turn it into a meditation um so rather conveniently we leave Lead, lead into yoga nidra so for me this is a fairly recent discovery of the last two or three years um i had explored yoga for a brief period of time again um about the same time i'd started trying to get getting fit through walking uh because of you know having a bout of um mono so i did buy a book on yoga and sort of learned a few basic exercises but didn't really persist with it i found it quite challenging actually to be, be honest with you um but i was aware that there was a a piece of it in it which at the end of the session you sort of laid in this pose um and i always assumed it was just like a cooling down exercise with with element of meditation i didn't realize that you could utilize it as a practice in and of itself um and so that this there's obviously a very strong meditative element in here but um quite a lot of it is to do with body scans also they are applying it to um ptsd as well um through something called i believe the i rest program now there's all sorts of forms of this technique um you know a lot of the ones you might come across now are more modern forms you can track down you know like versions of it in the, its original form and the original um you know yoga texts if you really want to do that but there's there's tons of resources online it's super popular and i'll include um a youtube link to my current sort of favorite favorite uh yoga nidra uh, channel podcast um so that you can what you find with this is it's useful uh, when you first practice it to um have, have get you get get a guide through it i listen to a podcast where they're guiding you through the process and then you find after doing it for about a week or so you can actually just do it without a recording um and the nice thing is with a lot of these podcasts is, is they have lots of different variations you can try, like short ones, long ones. My sweet spot's about half an hour, um, but you can have shorter ones. You can have ones that go on for an hour. And I find different times of day, I'm suited to doing different durations as well. Um, one word of warning with this, um, I found in the early days when I was practicing it a lot and, and doing it quite deeply, um, it does affect your sleep. Um, you might find you end up sleeping less because you get so relaxed through this. Um, I particularly enjoy doing it in the morning first thing before I get up. I find I, I get most rewarded for that, funnily enough. So after I've slept. Um, but the other thing I sometimes do is I, if I can't get to sleep... Um, I sometimes do like a short one. There are ones designed specifically to help you get to sleep as well. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. And then finally, in terms of the five, it's just dumbbell work. It's something I don't do that much, but I found it really helpful. I find it really sort of helps augment um, some of the calisthenics stuff. Um, I don't do particularly heavy weights. Um, I've sort of progressed. I think I'm about 20 pounds at the moment. Um, and, and it's just, for me, it's just, it allows me to concentrate on particularly upper body stuff, really, um, where I just need the, the other things just aren't really covering it, um, for whatever reason. So yeah, there's a, there's a set of about 10 exercises. I'll include a link. There's a really good video on YouTube where, um, and I've based mine on a sort of stripped down version. I don't do quite as many rep uh, sets um and reps for some of the things as in the video um i've sort of customized it just to my own needs and i basically just do this once a week i'm not doing it really to gain strength um i'm just doing it really as a alternative to this and to work on a few things um that for whatever reason um i'm not benefiting from just for the selection of the other practices that I do.
And then finally, um, you know, bonus six thing, because I just integrate it into everything now. So around, again, the time I was looking at sort of just different practices to just improve my general health um, and get over bouts of sickness, uh, meditation. And I used to do like meditation as its own separate thing. Um, and I think initially when you start out, it, it's probably a good idea to do that just so you can get into the feel of it. But what I tend to do is now I just integrate it into other things. So day-to-day -day stuff, um, you know, mindfulness on what I'm doing, or as a, an adjunct to Yoga Nidra, which has a mindfulness element in it anyway. Um, also, you know, you can integrate it into this uh, to make it a bit more meditative, you know, standing like a tree elements, um, the skeletal skeleton calisthenics um you know again if you're concentrating on form um that's a form of mindfulness meditation i think and walking as well so yeah i've now just integrated it day to day and i do remember uh, um when i went on one when i was sort of receiving formal uh, med meditation training um at the time you know someone saying yeah you'll probably find that over time you just start integrating it into your daily daily routine and obviously there's things you shouldn't <laughs> do um uh you know do med meditation techniques whilst you're doing stuff but you know um stuff where it's appropriate then yeah good idea i also found really helpful i, I learned uh, went on a self hypnosis course and learned learned how to basically hypnotize do hypnosis and do self hypnosis because when I did it, we it was un, uh, we were always taught that you really have to learn how to do hypnosis on somebody else before you can do it on yourself, just to know what it feels like and be hypnotized. Um, and this is like you know, not stage hypnosis, by the way. This is you know just uh, and if you've ever done it, you'll you'll know what I mean. But and I was always curious about the difference between meditation and hypnosis, and it was really useful feeling what the state feels like um as well so i found that that as a so additional seventh piece of advice is um self-hypnosis um and hypnosis generally is an interesting um mind state to explore um uh, particularly through you know what you can do with with hypnosis is you can like read these hypnosis scripts in or do things like you know um there's a, a classic one where you sit and you start to build up um in a room the different sounds you can hear so you just keep increasing it until you can't focus on any more so you start off with one sound then you notice that sound then a second sound then that sound and a third sound and you build them up and you find you get to about five or six and you actually go into this strange hypnotic state um, same as sitting in a room and like noticing stuff on the peripheral of your vision, like like five objects, and you just keep increasing them, and then you go into this sort of very tranquil, calm, almost like hypnotic state as well. So yeah, I think it's interesting exploring the the dividing line, the line between meditation and hypnosis as well, as just as a a mental practice. I haven't covered things like sort of brain training this and stuff like that, but the, these are the, you know, the five practices that I perform, you know, day in, day out for mind and body that I found really helpful. Thanks once again for watching. Bye for now. And I will catch you in a future episode.